Hi everyone and good evening. Today is Tuesday, April 7th, and we continue our devotional series with you. And again, this is the second part in the topic on prayer. Again, a couple of announcements before I start with the topic and the devotional. This Sunday, Palm Sunday, April 12th, uh, we have our drive-in service, and all of you are welcome to come and join us. And again, last Sunday was such an exceptional day that we walked away just uplifted and encouraged. It was great to, get, uh, to be together as a community of faith. It was great to be together as believers in Christ, celebrating Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So please come and join us as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The time is 10.15 in the morning. And again, just pull into the parking lot, pull into the slot, and we will celebrate with you. April, Monday, April 13th. We will begin our Bible study at 7 o'clock, and I'm contemplating about sending invitations out through Zoom. That way, you can join me, and we can engage in conversation, and we can engage in questions if you have them. And again, the book is by Reverend uh, uh, James Dobson, and the title of the book, uh, When God Doesn't Make Sense. And I'm certain that many of you out there who are experiencing the coronavirus or probably contemplating you know why is God allowing this to happen and again this is an age-old conundrum it's an age-old thought and theological thought that goes back to the book of Job probably back to the beginning of humanity so why does bad things happen to good people is basically the question and you're welcome to come and join us in our Bible study also to those of you who are at Faith United Methodist Church or anyone don't forget to send in your offerings we, uh, we still have bills to pay and our lights are on and we are hopefully that we can, hopefully we can come through this and come out the other side and just be uh, 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 stronger and better than ever before. I often think to myself that no matter what happens in life and no matter how bad things are, God will turn it around and make it better and he always does. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for this 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 time together this evening and just allow your Holy Spirit to consume all of us and bless us and as we contemplate and reflect on the topic of prayer truly allow prayer to be our tool to be our way to communicate with you and also to have this wonderful relationship with you and bless us and show us that there is power in prayer and that prayer does make a difference. In Jesus' powerful name we ask and pray. Amen. I have a couple of quotes that I'd like to read to you, but what I want to begin with is with a question. Does prayer make a difference? And where do you go when you pray? Do you have a special place that you go to when you pray? And when you pray, are you asking God to bless you and draw you closer to Him? Listen to these two quotes. The first one begins with these words. There's no telling how much the world has been changed as a result of the silent prayers of Christians through history. Prayer is powerful. And that quote came from Dr. John Maxwell. John Wesley, the founder of United Methodism, recognized that prayer prayer power when he said this give me 100 preachers who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God and I care not a straw whether they be clergy or laymen such alone will shake the gates of hell and set up the kingdom of heaven on earth God does nothing but an answer to prayers in your lifetime have you experienced the power of prayer in your life? I remember when I was ordained a deacon in those days, 30 years ago, we were ordained a deacon, and then two years later, I was ordained a full elder. And I remember our bishop was Bishop George Bayshore, and both of those times I had clergy, and, and the bishop and district superintendents lay hands on me in front of the entire annual conference, and they prayed as I began my journey in ministry. And what a powerful experience when someone or a group of people lays hands on you and prays. If you've never experienced that, 
please, if you're in our church, come and see me, and we will do that for you. It's a powerful experience. I can personally testify how the power of prayer from church members, from family members, from clergy, from friends, have changed my life and the life of my, my daughter and the, and, and the life of my wife. I know I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the prayers of my parents guiding me and loving me and praying, uh, praying for me. I remember every night when I, was a, when I was a little boy that when I would go to bed, I'd walk down the hall, and before I'd go into my bedroom, I would look over, and my mom was on her knees praying. And when I would see her on her knees, I knew that she was praying for me. I do the same thing every night before I go to bed. I'm on my knees, and I'm praying to God, and my wife often tells me, that when she sees me on my knees praying, she knows that I'm praying for her. She knows that I'm praying for Sarah. She knows that I'm praying for our church and our church family and, and other, other members of my family and, and all of you as well. That's the power of prayer in my life. There have been times in my life in ministry when I have been physically, emotionally, and spiritually exhausted. And it was the prayers from others that I received renewal and strength uh, emotionally physically and spiritually and I receive God's grace through the power of prayers from others who love me the greatest thing I, I, I believe that I often say this at weddings the greatest act that you can give someone of love uh, an act of love that you can do for, for someone and I'm, I'm usually telling the couple being married is to pray for them I usually say pray for your spouse uh, your, your husband pray for your pray for your wife Pray for your children. That's the greatest act of love I believe that any of us can do because there's power in prayer. God reaches down through time and space and touches us through prayer. And how the, I took an entire class in, in seminary when I went to seminary on prayer. And, you know, at the end of it, I still don't know how prayer works, but I know Jesus asked us to pray, and I do it, and I can see things happening that just amazes me and blows me away because how God works through prayer. I want to read to you several passages from the Bible regarding prayer. And this is from Luke chapter 5, verse 16. And this is uh, Jesus. And he's, he's just experienced the, uh, he just healed a, a leper. And, and this is what Jesus did after he performed such a miracle. Luke chapter 5, verse 16. If you have your Bibles, read along with me. But he, meaning Jesus, would withdraw to deserted places and pray. And when he would uh, go to deserted places, we know that amazing things are going to happen because through prayer and the power of Jesus' prayer, miracles would happen. And then what I read last night is from Luke chapter 11, and it's the Lord's Prayer, the greatest prayer that Jesus gave us. It's, it's the Lord's Prayer. The greatest prayer, the model of, of our prayers is from this prayer. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. Can you imagine the courage it must have taken that disciple to ask him to teach us to pray? And Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And then from uh, the book of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 and 18. 16 and 18. Listen to these words. Rejoice always, and this is Paul speaking. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. You know, if you feel like you're not getting any answers to your prayer, continue to pray, Paul says. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Many people give up on their prayers. Don't do that. Dr. Charles Stanley, I'm a fan of Dr. Charles Stanley, David Jeremiah, Billy Graham. If you're at home and you can get any of those uh, stations, uh, Billy Graham station or David Jeremiah or Charles Stanley, watch them. They are, they are movers and shakers in Christianity. Uh, Dr. Charles Stanley said this about prayer. God answers prayer one of three ways. And when you pray and you petition God and you ask God for a prayer, you may have that prayer answered immediately. And it may, may, it may be, yes, you may have what you're asking for or what you're praying for. 
And the second one is, no, you may not. And the third one is, is probably the hardest of all, is wait. It's just not time yet for you to have that prayer answered, and that can be difficult. I want to tell you a real quick story what happened when Cindy was in the process of delivering our daughter, and it'll be 23 years ago in July. We had, Cindy had, my wife had toxemia, preeclampsia, and it's, it can be deadly. So we had taken her into the hospital on Monday, and uh, Wednesday, Cindy delivered our daughter. In fact, Cindy delivered Sarah on Cindy's birthday, so they share the same birthday. But I remember throughout the day, the day before Sarah was born, I was in the, 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 the delivery area, and Cindy was, you know, the two, two OBGYN doctors were working on her, preeclampsia, it's deadly, and, and I knew that. And the doctors were concerned, I was concerned, they were giving Cindy medicine, and I remember at one point, and this was at Allegheny uh, Hospital over in Natrona Heights, where they, they delivered at that time. And I remember I was standing there, and when I get stressed out, I have a tendency to wring my hands. And I was wringing my hands, and I, I didn't know what to do. And it was at some point, and this was going on for hours, it was at some point that God spoke to me in the silence of that moment. And he said, Ron, you can't do this yourself. Just give it to me. And I remember I stopped, and I bowed my head. Probably no one knew what I was doing. And I prayed. I said, God, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to go home without a wife, without a child. I don't know what's in store for me. I don't know if I will go home with a wife and a child. I said, but you know something? I, I present this to you. I surrender myself. I surrender uh, Cindy to you. And I surrender the baby to you as well. And, and that fear that I had after I got done praying, the prayer wasn't very long, probably less than a minute. I had a peace like you wouldn't believe. And I'd like to read to you from Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. And again, this is Paul speaking. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And listen to verse 7. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I had that peace that Paul talked about. And if you've never experienced it, please, please pray and just surrender yourself to God. And I guarantee you, you will have that peace as well. I walked home uh, a couple of days later. We came home. Cindy was home. Sarah came home. And God blessed us. Let me pray for you this evening. Heavenly Father, we just ask your blessings to all who are suffering today to those who have anxiety, to those who are all stressed out, to those who are just experiencing the worries of the world. And with this coronavirus, we present this all to you, and we surrender it all to you, and we surrender ourselves to you. That's one of the most difficult things we can do as Christians, is to surrender ourselves, our power and authority over to you, and allow you control over our lives. And we do that right now. Father God, just bless us and bless those who are suffering and put an end to this coronavirus and just allow, allow our lives to get back to normal, all of our lives. And again, we pray for those who are on the front line to keep them safe and to keep this country and the world going. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Will you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I will see you all tomorrow night. God bless you all.